it comes to mixing cocktails, we can use just about anything as an ingredient, and that's what makes cocktails such good fun. But when it comes to using some spirits, we have to be very careful. And I'm proposing to make a couple of cocktails with a very fine single malt scotch whiskey. Now there are those out there that think that perhaps that's not a good idea. It took a long time to make it, why don't we just leave it alone as the spirit that it is. But scotch whiskey's been used for a long, long time in cocktails. In fact, I'm going to make you a drink that was created back in 1894. So if it was good enough for them, I think it should be good enough for us today. That cocktail is the Rob Roy, and I'm going to make it for you now using a Glenfiddich single malt scotch whiskey. Now, traditionally, this cocktail was made with a blended scotch whiskey, and blended scotch whiskies are generally a little bit more approachable in their style. Uh, that's for sure. But by sticking to a, a beautiful, balanced, Speyside single malt like the Glenfiddich 15, I'm assur assuring you that we can get a really good cocktail from this. So I'm going to start off using about two ounces of the Glenfiddich 15. And I'm going to stir this drink because the cocktail recipe calls for spirit only. And that really means that we should be stirring the cocktail. So start off with two ounces of Glenfiddich 15. And the 15-year-old Glenfiddich is quite unique in its maturation process. We're using a lot of European oak here. Um, it's actually called the Solera Reserve, and the Solera name comes from a special way of preparing whiskey during maturation, very similar to how sherries are made. Um, and as I said, a lot of European oak is used with the 15-year-old Solera. And that's the reason I've chosen this whiskey for the base of the Rob Roy, because I'm going to make a perfect Rob Roy. And the second ingredient I need is a red vermouth, a sweet vermouth, or an Italian vermouth. Those names are somewhat interchangeable. And of course, vermouth is wine-based. And just as the European oak that was used to help mature the Glenfiddich 15, some of those casks were sherry-based. So we have the sort of wine base in common here, which is why it works so well. So I'm going to add in one ounce of this Italian sweet vermouth to my mixing glass. And the final ingredient here are a couple of dashes of Angostura bitters. A wonderful ingredient behind every cocktail bar and any bar at home, but be very careful to use this in very small proportions only because it is rather potent. So just two nice clean dashes straight into the mixing glass. And some of you might be thinking, I think I recognize this cocktail. The ingredients here are somewhat similar to a very, very well-known classic cocktail. And you might be guessing it's the Manhattan cocktail. And in fact, the Rob Roy is really just a Manhattan, but specifically with Scotch whiskey. See, I told you that Scotch and cocktails have been around for a while. So I've got my cocktail ready. I'm just going to stir this up. So I need some ice. Fill up my mixing glass. And as we know, good practice when stirring cocktails is to grasp the mixing glass right at the bottom here, where we have a nice thick base to grab. And we can keep the other hand on the spoon here. That way, we're not warming the cocktail as we stir. So, just going to stir anti-clockwise here, 20 times, as I was taught. And I'm going to stick to that. And then around the other way. And if we do it nice and fast, with that carousel motion up and down, we're literally lifting the ice into the cocktail to help really chill it down and mix those ingredients together. There we go. And I can already see that it's got a lovely kind of velvet-like texture because we've stirred the spirit and not shaken it up. Now with my julep strainer and one finger firmly on the top, I'm going to pour this into a nice cocktail glass that's waiting. You can see how rich and decadent and lovely that looks. And since this is a sweet Rob Roy, which again refers back to the type of vermouth that I've used, I'm going to dress this cocktail with a real cherry still on its stalk. I'm just going to plop that in, and that's going to be my garnish. So this is one very classic way to use a beautiful Scotch whiskey in a cocktail, the perfect Rob Roy. Let's put that to the side just for a moment. We'll come back to it. And I'm going to prepare a different kind of cocktail, a little bit more refreshing, perhaps a little bit more modern. I'm going to make for you a Balvini smash. So you've guessed it, I'm going to use a Balvini single malt scotch whiskey, still from Speyside, just across the stream, in fact, 
from Glenfiddich, perhaps a little bit more complex, made in a very traditional manner, still using the old traditional floor maltins. The Belvini 12, the double wood that I'm going to start off with in my mixing glass, is again, uh, it's aged for at least 12 years and uses American oak and European oak. So we've got a wonderful plethora of flavors already going on here, nuances, wonderful accents that we can tease out in a cocktail. So let's get on and make this. I'm gonna add in two ounces of Balvini 12 year old in the bottom here. And this one I'm gonna shake up for you. We start off with our mixing glass. I'm going to add around about three quarter ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice and the same amount of simple syrup. All those ingredients come in along nicely. And I'm going to reach for our friend the Angostura bitters once more. And really it's this wonderful spice, robust notes that come out and kind of stand up to the single malt scotch whiskey flavors. So this can take another two ounces, two dashes rather. Be careful not to put two ounces in, otherwise your drink will taste somewhat different to what it should. And then finally for the smash, I'm going to take some fresh mint. I'm going to pick off uh, six or so nice pert leaves and they go straight into the shaker there. No need to actually muddle this mint and I'll show you why in just a second. So about six or so leaves. Let's fill our tin with some ice. Get that ready. Like I said, we're going to shake this. We're going to shake it up nice and firm so we can break up that mint and we get lots of nice flavor from it. That way there's no need to actually muddle the mint first. So, nice shake. Ooh, smells good. And let's serve this on the rocks so we can enjoy it. Nice sipping cocktail. So this is the Balvini Smash, which looks beautiful and bright. And actually, if you look closely, you see some of the little specks of mint, which actually looks quite nice and fresh. But why not let's garnish it with a nice big piece of mint. We'll find a nice pert sprig amongst the bunch here. And this was a little trick that my friends back in London taught me. When we're working with mint, the wonderful thing about mint is its aroma. It just jumps right out of the glass and makes everyone around sitting at the bar just really fancy something made with mint. Now to really enhance that, all you need to do is lay it on the palm of your hand and spank it. <laughs> Give it a nice slap. It helps to really release the aromas of the mint and then we can pop it in the top of the cocktail there. It looks great. It smells even better and uh, we can start to convince our guests that the Balvini Smash is a wonderful alternative way to enjoy a very fine single malt scotch whiskey. <laughs>